Hi everybody, it's Roger Terry here. Welcome to the Wednesday webinar. Looks like we have uh, five people arrived so far, so we'll just give a few minutes whilst we're waiting for other people to turn up. Okay, well let's get going because we've got half an hour for uh, uh, this uh, first Wednesday web broadcast. These are uh, a new thing for us. We thought we'd uh, kick it off before 2017 and uh, do our first Wednesday webinars. So one or two a month for uh, 2017 and taking topics that we can apply NLP to. So as you saw, today's topic is learning how to stay. And you'll be welcome to offer a topic up and we'll see how we, uh, how we can do with that in the future webinars. So some of you have trained with me before and perhaps with Emily too. Some of you have uh, been to the practice group, no doubt. And I know some of you are quite new to evolution training. So um, welcome everybody. Emily and I have been teaching NLP since 1996 and, per and other personal development techniques. So uh, we're both master trainers of NLP. And as uh, Emily said in her text, she's moderating this this evening. So perhaps we just go over for Emily to say hello. Hi, oh, hi everybody. Here we are. And uh, I'm, Roger was quite garbled then, so I do hope that everybody can hear clearly. I am going to be your moderator this evening. There's Posh. And so do put notes in the chat room. You can choose to let everybody know what you're saying or just put it to admin. And then I will give Roger the question at an appropriate time. Looking for just speaking about how to say no. Uh, um, uh, something that's very dear to my heart. And I'm uh, really looking forward to see how creatively people can take this into their everyday life so it can help make life more pleasurable. Okay, over to you, Rog. Okay, dokie. Well, let's, let's get going. I'm going to disappear from your screen. I know you'll be disappointed. And uh, I'm going to share my screen so that you can see the PowerPoint that I've put together. So just bear with me a minute while I do that. And you should now have uh, the screen share on with a nice purple and black screen saying, learn to say no with me this webinar you know why uh about saying no that some of us find so difficult and so many mixed motivations and emotions and then we end up committing to some things that we afterwards kick ourselves for exception so let's take a look at from an nlp perspective of, of how and what we might be able to do to to make a better job of it see there are two keys to effectively saying no and First one is your words. What do you what you say and how you say it, and the second one is what your what state you're in. State plays a big part in whether you're able to say no effectively, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So why don't we say no? Well, we're we're nice people. We don't like to refuse requests. Often we get concerned about other people's will, how others will see us, and we perhaps worry that we won't be seen in a good light. We often don't want to hurt people's feelings, that we feel we might hurt their feelings if we turn them down. Maybe we've had air feelings hurt before, and we don't like to do that to other people. You may say yes out of obligation or habit, or maybe you've just got to say yes to every, everything and everybody. And that's a little bit about what we're going to look at tonight. Okay, Rog, we're having a little bit of a problem with, with hearing you occasionally, so I don't know whether there's any okay. screens that you can set down and clear clear up. And what I'll do is I'll jump in when it becomes garbled so that everybody gets to hear the words okay. that you're saying. So back okay, to you. Okay, so do I need to go back a little bit or shall I carry on? Let me see if I can close some. So sometimes we say yes and say no, and it feels good in the moment, but then after a while, we kind of get into remorse and regret that we've said yes, we've taken on too much, we don't know we don't know how we're going to fit everything in. And then if you're in this pattern of obligation habit, you keep keep hoping you may go again, you've caught yourself again, somebody's asked you to do something, and without thinking, automatically you've said, Oh yes, that's okay, I'll do it. So we're gonna have a look at that. Maybe you worry about what's gonna be the outcome of you saying no. Maybe you're concerned about how that will affect your relationship, how that will affect the other person, and, and what might be the outcome. This is uh, one of my personal heroes, Paolo Coelho. He says, you know, when you 
say yes to others or you are not saying no to yourself and this is I think is really good advice in terms of when we're starting to think of uh, taking control and being a little bit more determinative than we are uh, normally well let's apply some NLP thinking to this so what's the process that we go through when we end up saying yes and then afterwards think I should have said everything we do has a process everything we do has has, has stages those those of you that have done practitioner and master practitioner will know the strategies that we use but we're going to look at a very simple process and we're going to look at the place where you could make a difference and how you might do that we're going to look at how you can change it once you know how the process works once you can get your consciousness into it then you can begin to change it you can do some things that will, will help you do things differently in the future we can have a look at what NLP tools will be useful and the thing to think about is what it will be like when I've changed so one of the, the good pieces in NLP is to always think well what's my desired state if I make a change and I begin to so in a more considered way what will that be like begin to focus on that and that so we're going to apply this little bit of NLP thinking to help us through um, this process of being able to say no and not things that we, we later on regret so here's a typical sequence we get asked to do things right these and so what happens when you get a request maybe it's not quite as pleading as this <laughs> even so what happens inside what happens inside and and the sequence of things that goes on here's your request so this first of all there's some without really knowing it consciously we take in the voice tone we'll take in the person's facial expression we'll take in their body posture and we'll and we'll hear their words and this observation will lead us to making some responses now often this is a habitual internal response it happens in nanoseconds we'll have some sort of emotion that will come up maybe it's fear fear that you won't be able to help the person maybe it's guilt maybe it's sympathy or empathy and the k that's uh, there is for kinesthetic so those of you that uh, haven't done any nlp you need to worry about that for the moment this is partly for the practitioners and master practitioners then we might be reading the other person's mind well what are they thinking and if we say no how will that be we'll do something in it what we call it NLP mind reading where we kind of jump into the other person's head and attempt to make predictions about how they might feel depending on what we're going to say to them and then we'll talk for ourselves inside but very quickly it can happen in in a nanosecond especially if we have this response well those two things happen quickly step one and step two to this to the request and out comes your automatic external response and you say yes okay then I can do that as the words are out of your mouth you have a sinking feeling and go oh, I've done it again I don't know whether I can do it I don't have time I'm gonna have to find time and then you'll start the levels of internal dialogue that begin to uh, uh, interfere with your ability to do things and you know as soon as you say yes okay then the other person says great can you do it now there's even more pressure so where's the place where we can make a difference where should we apply some differences to make some changes in order for us to be able to uh, response and there are some things we need to do clearly the, the place to start is at step two I'm just going to go back to step two one of the things that we want to be able to do is to change that habitual response have different different conversation and a different conversation going on with ourselves inside this is going to this is going to help enormously to shift our habit shift your internal response so how do we shift our internal response well first of all the thing to do is to slow down you might even want to say to the person, actually, I can't give you an answer straight away. Can I come back to you in five minutes? Can I come back to you in half an hour? You, you need to decide how much time you need to be able to assess things. You need to do 
some self-observation. Well, when I got that request, did that make me feel inside? Did I feel excited and ready to jump on it? Did I feel a sinking feeling? Did it feel heavy? What was I saying to myself? If you start to begin to do this bit of self-observation, then you can begin to have the place where you can apply some change. So what were you feeling? What were you saying to yourself? And even what pictures popped into your mind? Did you have pictures of being burdened down with the amount of work and extra? Now, once we've done this, we've got some data, we can begin to change things. And one of the best ways to, to begin to create a shift is to ask yourself some questions. Now, there's a good reason for this, which I'm gonna to come to in a moment. So what sort of questions could you ask yourself? The first question to ask is, have I got the time resources and skills to do this if you have one of those three things out if you don't have the time then you're going to need to say no do you want to do it is this something that you want to do even though it might put you out is it something you want to do do you have a good reason for doing it ask yourself these questions do i want to do it will it be a pleasure will you gain out of it will you gain some energy will you gain some 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 smiles will it be a pleasure for you to do it if not you need to think on that how will i feel is it going to make me feel happy i'm going to feel am i going to feel fulfilled will i feel down will i feel that it's a burden how will i be feeling the beauty of asking these questions as uh, those of you that have done some nlp know there are some things in nlp called the presupposition the presuppositions, that's hard to say, called the presuppositions of NLP. They're kind of assumptions or beliefs that, that help us look at circumstances. And one of the presuppositions, which I think is really useful and worth remembering, that we cannot not answer a question. If we ask ourselves a question, we all get an answer. Now, we can come as words. Uh, in fact, answers don't necessarily come as words. They might come as a feeling or they might come as a picture that pops into your mind. And they might come as words. Ask yourself a question now about something. What happens? If you pay attention, somewhere inside, you'll get an answer. This is the way we're programmed. This is an extremely useful presupposition. Any time in doubt and we need to gather information, Think about what sort of question you can ask yourself. And then this all means you need to slow down that internal response. So instead of happening in nanoseconds, you may need to give yourself the time for it to happen five minutes or 10 minutes. And, you know, giving yourself the time to do this is really a part of your self care and looking after yourself, taking on too much, in the long run doesn't do you any good. So here we have, you know, the first way to start shifting your internal response. And in NLP, you know, we're trained to ask good questions. Those new to NLP, there is a, a good model called the meta model, which you'll learn at some point, which allows you to ask questions. And because we cannot not answer a question, if we observe closely, not only we can we have the answers from ourselves, have those answers from other people, even if they don't use words. So that's part of the journey that you can go on when you learn some NLP. So here is the, the first thing, the easiest thing you can do is go shift your internal response. Now, the more times you do this, you slow down questions, then the more you'll embed this response instead of the habitual jumping to, oh yes, I'll do that for you. So. Now, I said there was something around about to do with words, because what we've just dealt with really is about how to get yourself in a different state when we've, when we've been requested to do something, when we're making an evaluation to see, is this something that we want to do? Then you need a little bit about your words. And I've just put that together five things that you might be useful for you to remember. If you're going to say no, be prompt, as prompt as you can, off a little bit of time just to assess and evaluate be fairly prompt if you want to say no do it concisely you don't need to be wordy and say it with kindness be honest 
don't fabricate reasons to get out of an obligation because without a doubt they'll probably fall apart so it's good just to be honest and if you don't want to do something be honest and say not be helpful it's your brains you know you could you may well think of a, an alternative that you can offer when you're saying no perhaps you know somebody else that might be able to help or perhaps you know another way of the person may achieve their outcome two heads are often better than one and 10 minutes might help work it through be respectful recognize that when you're saying no. respect what they're trying to accomplish oh that was good wasn't it i've got five things but i've actually got six <laughs> be ready to repeat yourself a few times before the person is ready to accept your no they may not hear you for the first time, especially if they're stressed about whatever it is concerning them and they want they want sold. So they're my six things to remember rather than five. Okay, so what results can you expect? Well, if you get this together, and even though you have a little bit more time to make that decision, it's gonna free up more time and resources. You're gonna get clearer relationships because people understand where you are and where you stand. And you'll end up having no resentment, no remorse, and no regrets. Or taking on something that you really shouldn't being more resilient being better at reflecting and actually you'll be more reliable i'll do something you'll have the time and resources to do it and do it well okay so i'm just going to interrupt you there for a second roger oh, okay good. it's going back going back to that clear relationship I, I was with a friend over the weekend and she said no to someone and it didn't actually go down very well and it was because the person had asked her, are you feeling strong inside? And so she went inside and, yeah, I'm feeling quite strong. I'm feeling quite grounded. I'm not feeling, you know, uh, unwell or tired or anything. So then the person who would said, are you feeling strong, said, oh, great. Would you help me carry my really heavy <laughs> suitcase to the car? <laughs> and, and the friend, my friend, has, she has a, a pain in her back but she didn't consider it affected her strength. So she said a simple, well, no, actually, my back's not very good at the moment. So I think that the, the, the having clearer relationships, I think when people do start to say no, that what you'll find is that the places with people, relationships where things are not clear, where people are trying to pressurize you or or manipulate you into doing something. So sometimes that can be uncomfortable. Yeah. However, it's really, really good to get it out into, because then you can deal with it. And then that gives you greater understanding of not only where you are, but where the other person is too. So I just thought that that was a useful yeah, think, example at this point. I think it is an, it's a really good example because what this allows you to do is to set some boundaries and to begin to think about what you know what are your boundaries for what's good for you and what's healthy for you clearly that example carrying somebody's heavy suitcase even though you felt strong wasn't going to be very healthy so and once people understand where you are once people um have that kind of idea of boundaries then actually there's a lot there's a lot possibly a lot of freedom in that because you can be clear so well, it brings us up to the last slide, I think. Got any questions? Because now to ask questions or ask for some clarification. It's just the start, really. There's a lot of knowledge and a lot of techniques and tools in the in NLP training, right from the right from the get go, right from the very first four days that that you that you do something, you'll learn tools straight away. It's an incredibly practical art, and my background, I'm a scientist, and uh, uh, my background, I like to keep, and I'm a biologist as well, so I like to attach the NLP training to what, uh, what happens biologically so people can understand not only what's going on in their mind, but how their body works, because it's not, they're not separate. And if we can begin to understand how it affects their biochemistry, how our mind can work to, to change to change our chemistry to have those good states when we need them then there's an awful lot that can be learnt that can bring you into a place of being really from changing you from receiving and being at the effect of things that happen in your life to actually being more determinative and deciding what it is you want and where you're going and how you're going to get there so 
there's also some coach training that we do doses training and the other thing the other things we do is some one-to-one -one coaching so wherever you are there's something here that is going to benefit you and we also run right. um, sometimes one hit, sometimes you hit some rough water and you need to have a bit of a breakthrough so this is this, not only do we teach not only do we do but we also teach people how to do these things as well so that they they can be independent we believe so that they have the tools to do this kind of stuff themselves so i don't know whether we've got any questions coming up we're coming up to uh 28 minutes past i said uh, these are just short half hour webinars so that you can get on with your life especially at this time of year as we're coming up to uh the christmas break so we don't have any questions just at the moment uh i think everybody has learned how to say no roger <laughs> Yeah, they had their no, they're saying no. <laughs> Good. Good. Okay. okay. And, and I think that that was a, you know, the what you went through was really, really useful. So let us know if you want the slides or you, they'll automatically get a, a replay so that you can watch yep. the slides again. And uh, yeah, and oh, hold on a second. Yes, very good. Yes, Sue says that she thinks that the slowing down and giving yourself time to think is a very good pointer. The other thing that is really yeah. useful to do is if you're not ready to decide at the moment, just tell the person, actually, that's something that I'd like a few moments, a few hours, a few days, a few weeks. No, don't make it make it too long to think about it and tell them that you'll get back Absolutely. to them. Absolutely. And it's a very good idea to say when you'll get back to them because otherwise it's a bit open-ended. So uh, who else is there? Just while uh, Emily soon that if something you'd like covered something that occurs in life that like learning to like saying no then uh, drop me an email or drop Emily an email let, let us know because I'm really happy to um, make these uh, webinars really useful and the idea is uh, just to find small applications in half an hour that we can, so where can we apply some NLP what would be the the way that um, that would work using a little bit of NLP and uh, something that you can do easily into and use easily in your life. I, Michael's saying dealing with indecision. Okay, I'll take that one and have a look and see exactly what I do with that. Okay, so if there's uh, no more questions, then I'm going to stop the broadcast and we're going to sign out and watch your emails. We're going to have another live, live webinar, a Wednesday webinar. In January, I'm not sure of the date yet, but I will be letting you know. We'll be putting it on Facebook and we'll, we'll send an email out. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, again, feel free to email questions because sometimes these questions crop, crop up a little bit later on. Take care and have a great Christmas and New Year. Bye, okay. everybody. Goodbye.